Okay, so welcome to this meeting, which is about the Red Clinic. Uh, it's an opportunity to learn about Red Clinic initiatives in Brazil. Uh, the meeting is being recorded by Alex from Asylum Magazine, Magazine for Radical Mental Health. Really good to have Asylum here uh, participating in this event and helping us. Um, the Red Clinic was set up in London about a year ago, and it brings together two aspects of practice. One is the clinical work involving psychotherapists concerned with addressing questions of mental distress and providing a space for people to speak about that distress in a confidential way and to do it in a way that is accessible to everybody. That is to provide a low cost or no cost clinic. So to bring together practitioners talking about their clinical work. Let me sit down. The other aspect is the political aspect to think about the role of psychotherapy in society and the political changes that we need to make the world into a place that doesn't cause distress and anguish. And most of those involved in the Red Clinic uh, set up in London call themselves communist. And by communist, they mean um, people involved in actual political struggle as collective struggle to end the rule of capital, to end capitalism as a disgusting, um, misery producing system. Now, the question is how to bring those two aspects together, how to bring the red aspect together with the clinical aspect and to do that in such a way that we don't fall into two different traps that are possible traps. One trap is that as therapists, we turn all politics into a kind of therapy. That is, we try and turn the political struggle into a therapeutic struggle and encourage people to go into therapy themselves as a way of changing the world. The other trap is to inject our politics into the clinic so that the clinic, instead of being a safe space for people to say whatever comes to mind, becomes a space where the therapist tells them what they should think in order to be healthy and happy. That is, we don't envisage the clinic as a place to tell people that they should be communists. So this involves a question about the relationship between red and clinic that we've been thinking through in meetings online and in Manchester over the past few months. And we know as a crucial part of our practice, that this is an internationalist question and that our activity here has to be internationalist. It has to link with initiatives from around the world. And we've been learning from initiatives in Palestine, India, Taiwan, other places. And today's meeting is focusing on similar initiatives that have been developing in Brazil for many, many years. And Brazilians are far ahead of us in thinking about the relationship between the red and the clinic. And we're very lucky to have two guest speakers uh, this afternoon who are visiting from Brazil. Ilana Katz, who's a researcher working at the uh, University of Sao Paulo, who's been in Manchester for two months yes. working with us. Uh, and Chris Dunker, who was here for a briefer time, also a psychoanalyst working uh, in the University of Sao Paulo. Uh, and they're each going to be speaking about red clinic kind of initiatives in Brazil. And then we'll open up to broader discussion about it, how it connects with our, with our own hopes for a red clinic. Who's going to go first? Elena or Chris? <laughs> Me. It's going to be Ilana. So over to you, Ilana. So I'm really, really happy to be here and to talk about this with you. Uh, I confess, I have never thought about talking about this in another language. <laughs> <laughs> it, and it, it means too much, you know? It's It, it means all the things that you were talking about because when we understand it goes this, this subject it, it it goes through languages it be, 
because we are, I feel like this, we are doing something. Uh, we are connecting. And I think it's about it. Um, so, I, I, I was just talking to Chris and I, I'm going to start. Uh, first of all, I have to excuse myself because I have this English to do with you, so sorry, I hope you understand me. And uh, if you don't, please let me know and we'll find a way. And, um, and I, um, I, I really want to thank you, William, and you, Erika, for uh, making a space for my journey here. It was really, really important for me. And for, for about this subject here, I will really, I, I think I'm gonna start from the end. And I wish, uh, I will say, after all, we understood that knowing we had so few needs to be an analyst, we can make more with that by being an analyst. So this is the, our conclusion. If we need, if we understand that we need less to be an, an analyst, we can do more being an analyst. Uh, and I, I wish I can find a way to tell you how we could find this place being analysts. And uh, we are going to talk uh, fundamentally about an uh, uh, experience we have done in Amazonia, the rainforest. Uh, that Amazonia is 2,800 kilometers uh, distance, distant from the place we live. So if we go by car, we take 37 hours to reach there. It's maybe we can go from the beginning to the end of this island for uh, one or two time. It's really, really, really far. Uh, and it means many things to be as far as that because we are going to talk about another culture. They almost speak another language. And you know, when I say almost, it's, it's really harder to be almost another language than another language. Because we may be, feel that we are communicating, but we are not. So we took many, many uh, exercises to understand how to, how to arrive there. And I'm going to tell you why we understood we should arrive there. Um, this this uh, place is, is called Altamira, and it is the largest uh, municipality in Brazil. It is located in the northern region of the country, and it takes place in, Bama in Amazonia. Uh, its ge geographical diversity and its history is uh, of a successive uh, preoccupations by the rebel soldiers, the extractivists, collectors, the riverine people. When I say riverine people, do you understand what I'm saying? No. no? So riverine people are the people that live in the borders of a river. And they, they, they live there. But when I say a river, it's it's a life. <laughs> it's a life, and it's a very big thing, and it's it's something that if I am here in this margin, I can't uh, see the other one, mm -hmm. and in in this middle there are many islands, mm -hmm. and people live there, and they have a way of life there, uh, and this this way of life, this this is a uh, identity thing for them, of course, as our is for us. And uh, they are extractivists, uh, they are uh, they they 
they don't use money, they have a, a neighborhood community that is very uh, help, helpful and, and it's something like it's family for them. It's a network of, of care, I think. Uh, Fishers and hunters. Yes. Share in between uh, periods of, of the year uh, what they wait, what they do for for for, for food. So. Yes, and some uh, there are some periods that they go to the city, so they have a double uh, house, one in the river and the other in the city. Uh, and when they go to the city, they go there uh, to sell fish to to buy things that they can't. Uh, make it grow from the earth and they are living like this and we learned to, to understand it as a, a social environment because it's the, about it's these people that make the rainforest work and live and alive and because it's the way that they, they live there it, it, it's a thing that takes part inside the forest and it's a very organic thing. I don't know, well, maybe you have heard about the, the Britain journalist that has been murdered in Brazil. He was there in the same place that we are going to talk today. And he, he was a very close friend of our friend and the one the, the job she's also a journalist and she is the one that I think I made will be there maybe like this demand our yes interview. yes she demanded our intervention saying that people they are really really suffering and I wish they could be hope as I am in my own analysis, we know how to make it happen. And we were just, no, but let's work on this together. So uh, what happened there? Why? Uh, this, the, the process of installing a very huge hydroelectric power plant called Belo Monte uh, on the, the, the banks of Xingu River, uh, Inside this uh, uh, Brazilian Amazon, it, it, uh, it was between 2011 and 2016, and our intervention, uh, it, it happened in 2017. Uh, uh, so the, the, the process of uh, this installation of Belo Monte uh, it was so, so violent and uh, that the riverine population living there suffered all types of human rights violations. Uh, and, and, uh, well, I have to tell you, uh, with the consent of the state. So uh, it was something that uh, everybody and all the institutions against them. Uh, we call it negligence a very specific and common way that states chooses to be at some places. So all the vulnerability that we are going to talk about, they are made because of this negligence. So we are talking about neglected people uh, for whom the ways of suffering are connected and also forged by this experience, the experience to be neglected. The condition of uh, social vulnerability of a traditional community and the habits of extraction are closely related to the radical change in one's way of life that Belo Monte brought to the territory. There was no state support for the change it was producing. Uh, it, I'm sorry, it has produced. Uh, we are talking about approximately 20,000 people uh, that have been evicted 
from their homes and from their lifestyle. So they used to live in the riverbanks and they now are living in houses as we live in a in places with no connection between the neighborhood. They, they lost everything. Uh, so uh, Nigland Sea has produced an extensive condition of extreme psychosocial vulnerability. The state is performing to cows and people must make something with that or die. It's like this. So who who is this people? We are talking about people that are refugees in their own country. And this is something very important for us to understand. Uh, they lost their way of living. They are still on the territory, but the floor has taken out from their feet. So they are there, but the life is not there anymore. From testimonies that informed us of a significant increase of forms of physical health, problems common to many people since their arrival of the factory, local testimonies of intense psychological suffering, and the evaluation that the devices of treatment in the field did not face the systemic expansion of suffering, we proposed a local clinical intervention. Let me tell you something. We went there many times before we arrived with an intervention. We were in a few research. And in one of these times, Altamira is a place that there are many, many uh, lines of power and lines of living there. So there are the, the, this river in, uh, population, uh, there are indigenous, there are indigenous that lives uh, in, in the forest and indigenous that lives in the city. Uh, there are people that are there uh, studying at the university and, and, people, uh, and working class people. And when Belo Monte arrived, it, uh, the, the population of the city has increased very much because they had to build a huge hydroelectric. So it, it made a, a very specific mess there uh, uh, in these lines of powers. And, and, and in one of these trips, we went to the social health institution and I was talking with the psychologist that was working there, and I asked her, uh, do you receive rivering, rivering people here? And she answered me, we don't ask the address. And I was, how, how can you treat someone if you don't really want to know their culture, where they are from? So it's because of this we thought, maybe we can go there and, and work with these people and also work with the social and healthcare in the state. So during our first visits to the place, we realized that the resistance and the struggle initially against the construction of the dam and then for the mitigation of the damage produced had a role of identity replacement. In the face of the destruction, which reached the, the whole system of dedications of the community. However, recognizing, because what happened is uh, the, the social care, the state social care wasn't there, but uh, the, the social movements, they were there and they, are, they were struggling with these people and they made something as a, a new identity for them. So they started to be the refugees in their own countries, the, the victims of Belo Monte. And this is, was something really, really important because of these, these people are alive because they, they lost everything. And if the social movements didn't come to help them to find a thing to be, maybe we can say like this, 
they would die. And some of them believe that. Uh, so, however, recognizing oneself as a victim and bringing together discursive and praxis ties around it often contributed to the aggravation of suffering and symptoms. Um, at each defeat, at each movement of fragmentation, an extended uh, cycle of repetition was consolidated. So every time that they lose one thing more, they was just uh, being more uh, sick. So, uh, on the other hand, according to our field informants, uh, the the activation of the community experience because of they, they put one they they, they they destroy the network of the people. Uh, so the the activation of the community experience, which established in in, in the in the P, uh, sorry. Sorry. Identifiable. Thank you. Identifiable uh, and being the process for the subject was deliberating disarmed by the dealer, not energy, is the, the, the factory, the name of the factory, in a determin determined pr procedure. So they want to do this, they want to destroy the networks. Our intervention focused on listening to, uh, uh, listen to and welcoming the uh, psycho suffering triggered by the Belmonte operation uh, on these people. The how, how we made it, uh, is what I want to point out. So we made something called care clinic. Uh, and maybe we can tell, can you interrupt me when maybe we can tell you that when we did it, we are very, very well connected to that territory, but we couldn't know yet that we are inside a movement, a, a psychoanalytical movement, that are many people around us, around all around thinking about the way of other ways to be psychoanalysts in this social, this critical social situations. And we are, uh, we, and it, it's not just because we didn't know they are doing, but they didn't know we were doing because we are just, I think it, it, it uh, says about a wave that was coming and we are just there and we we, we went with the way. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so we, we, we were supposed to organize a clinical intervention with these people that are suffering very, very much. Uh, there is no state, there is no institution, and there is the, the help was from the, the social movements and the way that the social movement helped making this identity uh, sequence. Yeah, also supplementary. Sup this identity supplementary stuff, uh, it, it was very helpful, but it brings some problems together. And so we, need to go there and uh, receive the community of homeless people, families with no neighbors, and fishermen without rivers, because the river was himself sick. Uh, so because of this, we in, uh, invented this care clinic strategy. And it, it's very important to understand that it is a strategy. Uh, it's not, it's a care clinic is a, a a strategy, and I am going to tell you what we understand from Lacan about strategy. It's a clinical device of attention and psychological suffering, 
uh, attention to psychological suffering based on the care of this population in serious state of social vulnerability articulated with the territorial experience. It is methodologically oriented by psychoanalysis and proposes the listening and the testimony of the, uh, to the affected community based on the production of self-reconnection uh, recon recognition experiences and the history history historicization <laughs> of the production process of the individual's current way of life. We understood that the combination of these two functions, listening and testimony, uh, contributes to the reconstruction of the grammars of recognition of the symptoms, as well as the historicization of the process of production or reconstitution of their ways of life. Month before our intervention, still during our second field pilot study, we noticed the inability of the traditional framework of psychoanalysis clearly to deal with the objective of our intervention. We aimed at uh, reposi repositioning of the subject in the discourse, and this required the drawing of a rather specific strategy supported by an unconventional tactics in the clinical environment. This is really, really important for us. To, so what we did, we rearranged our tactics. And because of this, uh, we call this a strategy, a strategy. So we were two analysts in each case uh, at the same time. First, uh, we we went there and we have a problem around who's going to pay for that. We are in Brazil and we have to go miles away. It's very expensive to, to do this journey. And um, I, I'm from the university, I said, no, uh, we are going to have uh, bourses from university. And they say, no, no. University can belong to the state, and the state is killing us. You are not going to uh, wash your hands, giving us a kind of therapeutic, uh, supplementary uh, uh, service. We are not going to allow your your visiting if the state is going to pay for that. And then we say, okay, let's go to uh, civilized places. Um, uh, um, Companies that uh, have nice uh, companies, nice companies <laughs> uh, that subsidize this kind of intervention, and they say no. Companies like hydroelectric companies, no, not not, not interested in companies uh, giving money for this. And so we, we have a huge problem how to pay for that, and then comes the community. Someone had the idea of uh, asking for money for ordinary people. So ordinary people give more, much more than we, we, we ask to pay for this uh, 20 people to go from Sao Paulo to Alta You mean like crowdfunding? Crowd crowd yes. crowd, like crowdfunding, like um, uh, money from, uh, from societies, of uh, science societies and things like that. Uh, then we learned money is important. Money have to circulate in, in, in other ways in order to produce a new kind of uh, community or new kind of uh, intervention. The second point is um, uh, lots of people come uh, to participate in this operation. Hundreds, I would say. Uh, artists, uh, eco um, uh, activists, um, Professors, clinicals, psychotherapists, arts therapists, lawyers. Suddenly, lawyers. we have to select 20 people from this. The learner was very engaged in this, and we selected not only psychoanalysts, 
this was very important because uh, hearing uh, those those guys, we realized uh, sometimes um, clear, well defined, established psychoanalysis is no good for this. They need some something else, but it, we couldn't grasp what specifically we are we are uh, searching for. For example, we have one psychiatric. A uh, very interesting, uh, young. very young, uh, the young yes, yes. and um, when she get, uh, um, uh, she was, she's a psychoanalyst, but when she gets there, uh, she realized she is the only psychiatric in the most extent um, town or, or municipality of Brazil. One psychiatric, and it's her, and she decided to stay there, and she stayed there. <laughs> she stayed there for uh, for for, for um, uh, life or for 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 living. Is that for five years? For five years now, and now she is conducting uh, the shamans, the um, shamans, mm -hmm. um, in order to confront COVID. Because you cannot uh, deal with COVID in, in the rainforest if you do not have the support of the shamans. So we go back to the idea that listening in shaman isn't uh, uh, not only a professional, it's a social function. Everyone could be in, involved in this, uh, this kind of uh, uh, listening, attention, and uh, taking care of, of the other one. So, yeah, I'm interested. No, no. no. You know, uh, talking about our team, it's something very, very special for me first, because we have to choose between very nice people. So, which is the nicest? Is, is this the question? How can we find this is going to work there? And, and so we made many steps of this to, to feel the engagement of people in our cause. And after all, we were 20, 16 and, uh, clinics, clinics and, and two journalists because this, they are there for the documental stuff. And these 60 are from different ages, so maybe from 25 to 55, and uh, different colors, different places. different places around Brazil, because Brazil, you know, it's this kind of thing. So each uh, state has a, a typical culture. So we were from six. State, different states, and men and, and women, men. And so it was a very, very diversity team. And something happened because this is this was not our criterion, and this mm. is a very special thing. We didn't find out we are going to make a diversity team. Yeah, with this or that criteria. Yeah. So you are our black, you are our woman, you are, no, it wasn't about it. We were just looking about the engagement of this, each one with the, with the cows, with the, the thing. I think, Leonard, uh, we uh, tacitly uh, take into account clinical uh, experience, yes. in some sense, and political training. Uh, we, 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 we search for how this particular person will react uh, in, in, in a political, extremely confused uh, context. Because it was a kind of dangerous thing to be there, you know, because we were against this power. So we, we are in a, such a fragile situation and we should be very, very tight one in each other uh, to, to, to be uh, stronger and to 
to find the way to be there. And it was a farewell. It was a very nice thing to, to understand. And the, 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 effect, the effect from, from one from one over the other in, inside of the team was something really, really special also. Uh, so with, this is a kind of plan where the, to, to make the team. And the other is how we're going to make the intervention. So we had already the notice that our device couldn't work. We couldn't stay there, open the door and say, I'm your analyst, please tell me what you want to talk. It wasn't about this, it doesn't work then. So we, we made this recombination of the tactics and we made this intervention in different uh, time. So the, the, the sessions, maybe the, the encounters with the people was about, they were about um, one, two or three hours because the distance was, even we, when we were there, it was the, the, the largest municipality in Brazil. So it, it's very big. So we had to take a boat to be in someone island. So we had to go there and to stay for two, three hours to, to start and, and finish some sessions in, in this time. We were two and we didn't uh, wait for the demand. We provoked it. And it is a very special thing because we are talking about people that didn't know this way of working with the user. What is, what is in psychology when you do the counseling? It's, it's not part of a culture for many of them. Most uh, of them, yes. For most of yeah, them. Yeah. Uh, and it was very important that Ilana and a small team went there two or three times before our major intervention because in those uh, approximation encounters we see that uh, simply offering uh, we are going to come we are going to come to give uh, listening psychologists from sao paulo we reinforce uh, the local leaders of social movements and then we came to uh, be a kind of reference for, for, for mental health because they uh, begin to take care of who's, who's is not okay here. No, this is suffering from this, uh, he's suffering from that. And uh, the, the, the idea of going there produces a kind of uh, effect before we are being there because they reinforce the net of uh, protection and uh, attention between them, among them. It was really interesting, this, this effect, uh, I will get us. You know, after all, because we are talking about the thing that happened five years ago, but nowadays, this territory, they still in contact with us. So many times that they had problems, they call us, could you please help? Uh, in, in the beginning of the uh, COVID pandemic, uh, they had uh, epidemical suicide or wait, wait for teenagers. And they called me and we need psychologists here. And it was such a surprise for me because three years before they didn't know what a psychologist is and what a psychologist could do with someone who was suffering. So it was, we made something here. So, and we organized uh, another network and another uh, group are, are listening to these people, Nancy. They are uh, listening to these people because of this. Now I work in a, uh, as a counselor uh, of a, a An um, so NGO, <laughs> an NGO uh, that works with children there and calls Aldeia. Uh, and 
and it, it, they are looking for the effects, the Belomonte effects over the children, the children that don't have belongings because they don't have territory to, to. So these are, are, are very important things because we were before and we still after. And it, I, I think it's a very good way to understand this connection about clinical and political things, because is we are talking about how do we deal with power. It's about this in the end. Uh, how clinical, how the clinic could help people to understand the, the relations of power they are in and how we as clinics, how we can talk about power and then struggle to, how can I say this with the share, share to share power and not to, 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 mm -hmm. to let it be just in one hand. So this is a very deep connection for us and a very important thing. Lost my desk. <laughs> what is it? What's so? Would like to talk a bit of. I don't know. No, uh, one or two things about uh, what's what was the, the clinical intervention, uh, because uh, we have lots of um, experiments like this during those days, even in public space, in uh, in squares and markets, uh, in land Brazil. Uh, where people uh, put a chair and uh, a sign, I'm listening, uh, here's a psychotherapist, uh, and people uh, go there for, for an encounter, for two encounters, and, and it proceeds for, for a hospital or consulting room and so on. Uh, we, we have uh, something around uh, psychotherapy and listening is, is going on in Brazil as a social movement. With no leader, with no institution uh, to to uh, command the situation, but it, even in small cities, we have experience like like this. This was a very organized experience, but they uh, they, they have a lot of uh, similar things. But in Altamira, um, we expected to do some kind of work around grief. So many losses are, are going on. Uh, we expected that, uh, but we, we were surprised with the, the problem, the clinical problem presented by the identification. Identification as a survivor, identification as a victim, identification that produces a kind of uh, a power to so local social movements uh, in order to resist. It's okay, it's very important. But after the, um, the main Belomonte is, is, is done, uh, they are still uh, connected by this kind of identity. So we, we have lots of discussions around how to um, transform this without uh, simply um, uh, dismantling this identification. Difficult to do that, but in many cases it goes ahead. But um, third, uh, one interesting thing is the kind of a symptoms they 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 have, because uh, at the beginning of the experience they say, uh, Eliani Brom, this this uh, friend of us, friend of Ariana, said it's strange because here we have those women. Uh, uh, paralysis uh, on a uh, on leg. We have uh, uh, blind people with no neurological um, um, uh, fundament, uh, medical condition. We have uh, absence. Uh, we have uh, lots of symptoms that uh, go to the early fright. That's, that's why uh, pills uh, are not indicated to this. To, this kind of uh, heart attacks and uh, ABC problems and so on. 
it's a question for us why these kind of symptoms appear in this particular situation. Not only traumatic uh, effects as we expected, but at the end, uh, the problem is you go there, you offer some support, you offer something, and you go out. And that population will be better, but which, which kind of, uh, of uh, effect, political effect, can we uh, desire ahead of this? So the idea uh, is that we are in this part of the, the project now. All the cases, all the persons uh, we listen, were uh, the, the experience were written by uh, those psychotherapists. And we rewrite it, his and me, in order to change some in the identifications uh, and con condense uh, the experience. And we give this material to that journalist that is going to write a book, a book uh, producing a kind of a picture, a kind of a history of what happens here and which kind of suffering uh, this population crosses during those days. Why? Because listening to those people, we uh, realize they are being re-traumatized since 70 years. The uh, rubber war, uh, exploitation, uh, uh, mineral exploitation, uh, massacres, uh, diseases, and a huge roads they decided to build, crossing Altamira, and every time they uh, have a kind of illusion around, we are go going into the progress. We are going into civilization. Now we are going to be saved, and, and this is what the mission and psychoanalytical uh, sense of it. The families was crossed by those um, those traumatic experiences. So it is uh, sending back a book, sending back all the city, uh, transform narrative around what was happening. This means it's a clinical intervention, it's a social intervention, it's a political intervention, giving a book, giving a book for you that uh, trusts on me uh, your suffering. Uh, this is the kind of thing we are. We are discussing which 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 clinic is it? Is it a clinic? Is it therapeutic or you know it, it's something very maybe strange to say, but in any moment of this process, we are worried about being or not being psychoanalyst. That was not our point. We are there. To make something with the tools that we had. And we understood that our tools, they must be rearranged, recombined to work there. And th this, in, in our very, very precision, uh, specific tool is our listening, the, the way that we have to understand to, to think and to work with people that are suffering. And th this situation about the ident identification was a very, very uh, delicate situation because, you know, I was telling you, we, we never understood we had to disidentification make some disidentification with these people because this was the thing that were making them alive. So, but we we wish to make a kind of disidentification that does not uh, substitute the sense uh, of um, belonging. So this is a very precise account to do. And we can't, we are not able to do this with, without the people 
that are suffering the, the thing and in and living there. So it was something that we built together. They 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 told us how to do this. Maybe I can tell like this. And our our point was when Belmont arrived, it, it made a cut, a real cut, uh, a cut from the real. Maybe you can say like this, uh, like. You know your life, the life that we used to have. There is no anymore. So now you, to 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 survive, you have to be the victim, the refugee in your own country. Uh, and now you are this, and being this, it make a kind of romanticization of the past, because my past, I was so happy. My life was so perfect. My, was so my painful. I, that was the the. The romantic rainforest tale, you know, and we knew that wasn't true because they the, because they were suffering because this is a, a a territory that suffers all the state violence since it exists since Brazil exists it exists for us because there there were people there before very before so. Uh, we were just, okay, that life is your life, but that wouldn't have to be perfect, to be the life that you want to have, or the life that you lost. And this is very much, even if it's not a perfect life, to lose the way that you recognize yourself, it's too much. And this is something that we, we could reach with the people, this kind of uh, respect of a collective movement and a kind of singularization of their, the, the experience of each one, you know? And how we could do this? We, because we were listening, we were there, we, are, we were together with them, we were just, Respecting the way that they had to, to to speak about things. So one thing that was very very interesting for us it was they the, the, the sense of priva privacy. Privacy. This is not a thing for them. So I, I privacy. Privacy. Yeah. So they, they talk about their lives, sexual lives, yeah. in in the middle of kids and parents coming in and out. They, they talk about sex, they talk about violence, violence they talk about uh, neighbors, loss, neighbors, they talk. And they, they need to show things to speak. So the, the way of talking is it, just, it's there. And come on here, Monique, tell her what happened that day. And it's true. <laughs> it's, it's true. And that that was something that we understood. It was it it, it it was not about our way of speaking about important things. It was about their way. And this sense of being foreigner, I think, is the the deepest thing we learn about being analyst. <laughs> we don't know about the other. We don't know. And our lexical is not something that will ha help to speak. To be the one that does not understand, it's a very, very important thing to do as an analyst. And Lacker offered us the notion of the analyst desire. And this is an ethical drive. You know, when he, he pointed out, he, he was talking about the post, uh, with the post project to say, there is your counter transference. It's your problem. It's not a problem of your patients. So the thing that you feel, the thing that 
you think that someone is telling about you, it's your problem. You, you deal with that. Now we are going to stay with the other and you are just there to, to provoke, to cause uh, the other speech. Maybe I have a, a small example of that that brings us to the, the concept of Unheimlich, uncanny. Uh, we are searching for a particular man uh, in a particular house, but there, there, there are no members at the house. And the house is uh, far away you know, one, uh, uh, of, uh, from the other. And so we, we are searching uh, which, which house, where is the house uh, where this particular man uh, or, uh, is living. And suddenly we realize that there's a spike, and, and then the spike and it's a number, and it's our number. He thinks our phone number. Our phone number. He's clever enough to understand the the way we can recognize he is he as uh, pointing our number and that spike, and it functions. Incredible. So this is the the the, the main thing that I think we didn't have or uh, uh, didn't use uh, the standard in mm -hmm. any way. Not about the time, neither about money, neither about places, neither about nothing. You know, in the other side, we, we were, were informed by theory and concepts. For example, uh, we, why we deal with two therapists? Because we are going to have four hours, three hours with that person. Uh, if you make just one big discourse, it won't work. It won't, won't work. So with two uh, therapists, you produce uh, many uh, sessions with cuts, uh, with the one and the other one and one and the other one, and we produce artificially the effect of, of cut. The effect of so one therapist at a time, but you were alternating. Uh, mainly, yes. Or two together. Yeah, two together. Oh, yeah. But the conversation uh, goes to that. Yes. And the other one is making one point here and another point over there. And then the conversation goes to the other one. And then it goes back to me. This uh, changing uh, positions mimetizate, uh, artificially reproduced, uh, the cut. Oh, this is enough. Oh, now Ilana is going to ask uh, something else. Change issues, we change. By cut, you mean a kind of break in the discourse? Yes, 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 yes. I think this would be the interesting piece. So much, <laughs> much, uh, so much though. Uh, and uh, I, I think so much that uh, will resonate with the different contexts that we work in as well. And this is what is peculiar about this, that there are similarities, there are things that we need to learn from here in the way that we go out of our little middle class therapeutic bubble and meet people who are not speaking in the therapeutic way that we expect them to speak. They speak in a different way and that will be in different communities of different kinds, working class communities, communities from different cultures that come, come to Britain. So lots of things that are really relevant here. Um, I want to open up for other people to ask questions, but I do have a question about the specific context in Brazil, that Brazil is very different from Britain in the sense that psychoanalysis here is a minority practice and very much associated with a specific section of the middle class. Whereas in Brazil, psychoanalysis is everywhere. You'll read about psychoanalysis in the newspapers, you'll see psychoanalysts talk on television programs, you have political meetings with psychoanalysts participating. The psychoanalytic discourse is everywhere. World Social uh, Forum? In the World Social Forum in 2002, we went in, in uh, uh, 
to uh, to uh, the, the the cyclone that were, were, were present there in uh, in in the south of Brazil. Uh, it, it's it, that's a different context, but at the same time, you're describing going from your context in Sao Paulo, where there's a lot of psychoanalysis, to a place where, in a way, you have to teach people what psychotherapy is. So there's something different and there's something the same. <laughs> it's strange thing to me. I think another difference is that whereas left wing or talk about liberation, is still a minority here in Britain. In Brazil, there is a long tradition of political activism involving many, many, many hundreds of thousands of people. That's another difference. So the connection between psychoanalysis and politics is working in fields that are both very strong and very present in the culture. Whereas here, we're working in two fields that are really quite marginal. I uh, will bring your idea. Uh, it's a very popular uh, idea in Brazil those days. In order to understand this uh, whole uh, situation, uh, it's the, the idea that there is a, a kind of a class struggle within psychoanalysis. Psychoanalysis uh, couldn't be taught, it must be taught as a kind of unified program. Uh, with the um, same politics and so on. And uh, perhaps this is important to understand why, why, why that happens in Brazil. Because uh, on the 70s, uh, during the dictatorship, they decided as state politics to substitute, substitute, substitute root, uh, philosophy, social theory, uh, politics, courses by psychology. So we have a, a self-colonization of the country. And psychology was uh, a part of this operation in order to put families in order, uh, treat the adolescents, subversives, sub sub and uh, contain drug use, abuse, and, and so on. And uh, so we have lots and lots of psychologists in Brazil per capita for a poor country like us, because they want to pacify people. But the idea goes, produces again our counter effect, because people realize that what, what happens, and then begin to uh, resist to, to that. Important critical ideas from Argentina, from England, from, uh, from France, and establishing psychology in a kind of a, a Class and Ford and, and Altamira have something to do with that because uh, it's the border of the forest. And one uh, state uh, politic for Amazonia uh, claims that Amazonia is empty. We have to occupy it because no one is there. They negate the existence of uh, uh, in, in indigenous uh, local people. And they built a huge uh, road to cross the Amazonia, devastating uh, plants, ecological Community. disaster, starting from Altamira. So Altamira is kind of a symbol of Brazilian self-colonization. And then 40 years after that, we have another hydroelectric civilization thing and so on. Uh, I think this will... Uh, Produces a kind of a culture where psychoanalysis is aligned with other critical approaches like feminism, like uh, post Marxism, like uh, uh, anti racist uh, decolonization theory. And this is very, very important to, to work with uh, other political projects uh, and other ways of doing, doing critics. Uh, and maybe this something to do with the particular position of psychoanalysis in relation to state. Because we are in and out state, in and out institutions, in and out communities. We are marginals uh, in, in, in some sense. Of course, if you, if, you, if you want, you can get into institutions, you can, uh, you can be 
uh, you can produce a, a elite clinic for elite people. Uh, and, and, but this struggle is essential to understand why when Bolsonaro and the right wing and fascists uh, uh, went into power, one of the first groups uh, to manifest against it was the psychoanalyst. The psycho, uh, we participated in this uh, psychoanalyst for democracy. Uh, and immediately some, some groups of psychoanalysts uh, started to say, this is not psychoanalysis. They are not in psychoanalysis. They quit their you new psychoanalysis. Ah, yeah. Yes, yes, because uh, you were doing something else. This is not uh, psychoanalysis anymore. So the signifier of psychoanalysis is the central point of this struggle. Uh, doesn't mean that uh, uh, he's uh, up or down in relation to psychotherapy, but it, it was naming the division. It's naming the, the struggle. Well, let's, so let's open up to the audience. And I, I know that Swarab and Laya have to go soon, so I'll, I'll give you the first question. Yeah, I can. So sorry. It was really interesting, you know, kind of fascinating, you know, I, I love what you have done. So thank you very much for coming and telling us that what are you doing here. Um, just, you know, I have lots of questions, but I will ask them hopefully in future. But I have a question that, you know, you told that, uh, you said that uh, now there is just the psycho psychiatrist there, yeah? You are not. Yes. Yeah, still there. No. Yeah, we, we know. We we are but, not but there is a team there, yeah. No, we made a very punctual intervention. Uh, we stayed there for twenty days, mm -hmm. uh, and part of our intervention is this book, that the, the testimony book that Christian told. But we didn't plan, but we understood that. The effects of our uh, intervention is still there. Of course, because Erika, she, she calls Erika the psychiatrist mm -hmm. that is there. Yeah. Erika is there and she is now a, a teacher in the university. Uh, she, she, she migrates from psychiatry thing to the uh, medical community thing. Mm -hmm. And she's teaching that there. And there are some other uh, understandings about suffering in the territory. This is, I think, the, the very deepest change. Mm. I think uh, she's referring to the internet support we gave them to, to date. Um, we, 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 we listen, we offer psychotherapy. Therapy for now you have other now. sessions with them, yeah? Yes, by uh, those uh, one net we have uh, connected with the with, with university. It's a net, a listening net. I don't know if you have this here, but it's very common and it precedes this experience and this uh, social movement. Uh, the um, universities, the um, training uh, societies, and so on, offers uh, nets of uh, of listening. Uh, so you can go there and have psychotherapy subsidized by this or that you know, uh, society. And we have a net, an informal net, or a net connected to show it. Uh, <laughs> The movement of uh, workers uh, without a roof. It's another initiative of other analysts that they are not with us, but are friends of us, people that we like very much mm -hmm. and we learn very yeah, much. We yes. yeah. Chris is a super advisor. Okay. He was doing his PhD with Christian. And Paolo Bia was here, mm -hmm. and they are uh, organized to, to listen people there mm -hmm. uh, from almost but, two years yeah, now. Kind of boy scout, yeah? Yeah, but, mm -hmm. Yes, Zoom. And it's very difficult. Because of this, I, I asked you yeah. about your working yeah. 
because it's really, really hard to find a way to provide the internet stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm so we would, I work with them. I, 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 I listen people that are listening people in, in Altamira nowadays. And it's, I was in the session and then the net Trash. failed. Mm. So in the, it's something that next week, and then they went to the other side of the river and there, no, 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 here. Yeah, yeah. Another half an hour. It's very, very hard to, yeah. to maintain what they are doing. Yeah. You know, I, that, that's my, you know, concern that I always have this concern that somehow I just don't give them a taste of, you know, psychoanalysis, psychology, <laughs> or somehow political uh, vision and then just leave them alone. Mm -hmm. Or you said that that's I think the situation that is more complicated because you said that they even don't know anything about mm -hmm. psychology. So I think that's the danger of psychologizing them mm -hmm. just and you know just give them okay. They sure they had some rules, some uh, tools to you know somehow um, solve their problems. But now they have another tool that they are not expert in it. So. That's a kind of you know, uh, ethical issue for mm -hmm. me. That how we can solve the problem that not only uh, psychologize them, but help them to be political uh, aware of their situation. Because you said that they are refugee in their hometown. So again, they are refugee in their hometown. They know something about psychology, but they still are suffering. No, I'm eager to know how this social movement that you are talking about changed their situation. You know, that they can have voice to talk about themselves that we don't want this life, we want something more. It's very, very interesting. Maybe we can try some answers. Let's work together. Because when we arrived there, what they, they, they were talking about, I had a heart attack. I have... Uh, Headache. I someone, can't sleep. Uh, I can't sleep. Someone had had a uh, uh, neurological panic. Pan. I know. Yeah. It, and many many physical symptoms. And we were just. What, how, how do you understand it's physical? How how what you can do when you understand that that remote arrived. And we had a, a, a very ep ep epidemical heart attack. Wait. Suddenly, there's <laughs> lots of diseases in your family. Uh, you had a, a diabetical wave since Belmont arrived, and it was this kind of stuff that mm -hmm. was happening. So, when we were there, and we are just telling them, you know, I'm a psychologist. What is it? The, the best definitions of psychology and psychoanalysis we took from them. One day I'm going to, to, to show you the things that they say about what we are. It, it, it's amazing. It's really, really the most nice things that I've heard about so my dog. <laughs> and uh, when we say this, what do you do? We want to listen your suffering. We want to listen the things that are not going well with you. It's about this, my job. Would you like to, to tell me about this? Would you like to talk about this? And it was all. And this uh, was a toll for them, not for us. Because when they look and they understand that physical things, are not just physical, but they mean, yeah. uh, and they talk about their lives, and they they represent something. They can do something with it. Just uh, and and when they can do, when can they can deal and manage? They can go. You know, I I I won't have a, a heart attack anymore. Yeah. I want to talk to you, state, that you are making me suffer. And this you owe me. 
So you have to pay about my supper. I have a place to live. Otherwise, other way I will have a heart attack. I will have a, a, a brain start. Okay. Stroke. Yeah, stroke. I, I will have something. And this, these are things that happen because you stayed. You made this for me. And this is a, a very change, in, uh, in a very deep change in understanding uh, of what a state can do. Uh, and I think it was about the thing about listening that ha it, it happened. Sorry. Yeah, but because uh, I told you uh, there are lots of uh, colonization projects in, in Altamira. And they resist uh, those interventions because they have a very strong uh, community way of life. And so your your house was burnt. In two weeks they restore the house because uh, the neighbors come, everybody helps everybody, and there's the house again. But this time it is different because they separate people. They took people from this island and put it here in this new city, perfectly designed to receive. And, and, and the cousin goes uh, out for another part of the city. So they dismantle community. This is an extra uh, uh, suffering um, uh, effect. And uh, I want to problematize the idea of psychologization. Because these guys are saying, I have a pain on the head, a headache. Strange. When, when happens? Uh, when, when started? Maybe when, when I'm, I'm now in this new situation. Could you ever thought that there's a kind of relation between? Losing your river, losing your house, losing your family, and then you have a headache. And they do this connection. They do a kind of connection. You would say this is psychology, psychologization, but this is politicization as well. But, I mean, just to follow Lyle's question, you know, the answer isn't more psychology. The answer is more collective support and collective action. Mm -hmm. Isn't this the most progressive thing you're doing to provide the basis for this collective sense again and this connection? Yes. It's not the psychology that's important. Yes, because you know, of course, because after that comes I have to uh, recontact my cousin. Where's my uncle? I lost my river. Uh, it produces a kind of a transformation that we reestablish a demand for collective. There was a very big problem with this idealization of the past. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like my life was perfect, so mm -hmm. I have to restore that. I have to have that life again. Mm -hmm. And we were then saying that it was that that is not possible anymore. That life because here Belo Monte is here. You are living in another place. Yeah, so the walls. Yeah, so the the, the, the rainforest is another thing nowadays. So what you can do, what you can bring from there to, to, to fix up your life now. And this is a very, very important thing because this, they, they brought the network. They brought the, 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 the neighborhood feeling, you know, they brought, and they were just, I can, maybe if I can go there and stay a little bit in that island with my family, Maybe I, I will feel better, and then I, I can pick my kids and go there to see my mother because they don't see her for three, four months. And that was something that the, this recon, uh, reconnection is the collective thing that we could uh, we could m make as an operation there, something that we made because. Not we made, but we, we made space to happen, maybe. You need each other. Why you are allowing people to make you alone? This is, put your power here. Put your power to be together, because together we can 
you can do more. And it's not because we did it, because we were inside that discourse that was there, many social movements and everybody was in this uh, way of, of, in this way. I don't know if I can see. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you very thank much. You. Sorry for the reading. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ian, maybe? In sort of what, how are you, how's the read of what specifically are you going to draw on? Is this the only thing you're going to draw on? Your communities in London? Perhaps all three. I need some help from these two. I will send this question to the main Yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, well, why don't, Ian, why don't we talk a bit about our engagement with the uh, whole sort of patrimonies of state violence mm -hmm. kind of, um, you know, the, the Yes, list. Erica, over to you. Oh. <laughs> and the letter goes to you. Well, so, um, I mean, some years ago, um, we, as British psychoanalytically informed practitioners, were invited by Chris, among other people, to be part of a very large, uh, well, in a sense, um, a, along with other British psychoanalytically informed practitioners, psychologists, psychoanalysts, psychotherapists. Bacanians, Kleinians. Yes, from different theoretical backgrounds and counsellors to, um, to um, attend various uh, workshops and um, sort of comment upon um, a whole kind of nationwide initiative in Brazil in the in a different political very different political moment from now mm -hmm. um, where the state invested a lot of money mm -hmm. in um, doing a kind of I mean part it did it started off being about memories of the dictatorship is that right it started with the commission of truth as you yes, know, what happened in, in South Africa, Zulu was mediation. Brazil was, was the last uh, country in South America to do this. In margin clinics, the part of this project of of uh, taking uh, dictatorship, violence, and torture, and, and 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 so what happened was that different different states or group groups of of. Of practitioners and researchers in different Brazilian states of Brazil decided to explore this in different ways according to the particular histories of particular contexts. So in, in Sao Paulo State there was there was a place that had had an ecological disaster and mm -hmm. as well as a you know political repression mm -hmm. and disappeared people and all of that. And so Ian and I went to um, to hear about that is specifically about that project's work, um, as well uh, as well as the whole national networking meeting, where people were reporting to each other. I mean, in an, in another state, this is Santa, uh, Santa Catarina. It was a, it was a child a child therapy clinic that they, that had been set up, and uh, in in uh, Rio it was something else, and so on. So, but um, uh, so the in and what happened in in that project in Sao Paulo was a sort of Community development project of mm -hmm. collective memorialization and intergenerational dialogue, mm -hmm. building conversations over the silence of the, as I recall, the silence. With families that have someone died or tortured. Mm -hmm. um, but um, uh, and and there was uh, the writing of down of, of, of testimony and the making of books there as well, as I recall. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I have a question about literacies here, but um, mm -hmm. um, I th but that was really powerful for us to listen to, but also how the discovery that you all made, as I recall, that it wasn't just about the dictatorship, um, it was about the history of slavery mm -hmm. in, in, in Brazil, and Brazil was the last country to abolish slavery, right? Um, really quite recently, and uh, also how all of that is reenacted in contemporary police and state violence against black, poor black people um, all over Brazil, you know, with murders, police shootings every day. 
Uh, same police uh, training from the dictatorship for now. So they're still killing people and uh, black people were in the periphery of the big cities. So, so it was the the connections that were being made um, from you know a from a particular political moment of you know the, the dictatorship, both to the now. I mean, the dictatorship now some time ago, you would think, um, and but also from much earlier, and how that they have to be thought about as as part of a a, a much bigger kind of collective uh, experience to mm -hmm. be processed, along with. Um, I mean, you know, there are parallels with the situation in South Africa, obviously. And uh, um, so we we were very impressed to hear about all of this, weren't we? Um, but also about how psychotherapeutic and therapeutic and uh, practices were taken outside, you know, outside building, you mm -hmm. know, consulting rooms and into um, into the street into um di you know discussions and i think what you're saying about not romanticizing the past is very interesting and i i'd like to come back to that as well um so so we we felt that we we had a lot to learn from hearing about how the connection the con conceptual connections but and also the practical mm -hmm. um the practices you developed um uh in 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 turning uh a sort of talking cure into uh um into a um a social and community activity um that was also therapeutic in its effects that 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 that, that the the producing those effects was not necessarily the explicit objective is that right I mean, so there were loads of things we we came away from hearing about these very particular projects, and each in in each state in Brazil was doing it. The group of researchers and practitioners was were doing it in a different way, um, uh, and were telling each other about it, which was great. And we had some interpreters with us and translating, and very exhausting actually the <laughs> process. And, um, you know, it was really intense days of this reporting and discussing and evaluating and commenting process. Also, kind of great to see that. How often, how often do we see that kind of thing happen in this country across different, across different uh, therapeutic approaches and trainings? Uh, psychologists, psychiatrists, psychoanalysts, uh, psychotherapists of different backgrounds. You know, um, not idealizing. I'm sure there were tensions. Power, you know, performances of power in every way as well, but um, which you could sometimes see. But it it was fascinating. Yeah, I mean, I think I think one thing that was really important mm -hmm. for us in this experience, and, and something that we can see in what you've been describing mm -hmm. uh, with with the river in people, mm -hmm. um, is that uh, there are lots of psychoanalysts and psychotherapists in this country who have an awareness of social issues and think of their work as being in some way progressive, in some way connected with um, enabling people to cope with difficult situations, even enabling people to, to think about how to resist oppressive situations. Okay, and, and those individual psychotherapists will try and tailor their practice to this situation in such a way as to enable people to have access to psychotherapy, for example, introducing a sliding scale of, of fees so that they can you know, cross subsidize from people who are wealthy and pay a lot of money for their therapy and provide lower, lower fees for people who can't. Um, but I think what is important about the Brazilian example is that all of this is happening collectively. It's not only individual therapists deciding to be nicer but it's about learning through a collective process what the links are between what your practice is and what's going on in the community. And learning from that community and embedding what you're doing in a community through collective, reflective discussion oh, and changing things in that way. That's what we want to do with the Red Clinic. And that's why the Red Clinic brings together therapists who have some political understanding of what therapy is. So that the Red Clinic is 
is a clinical practice, but it's also in some way um, a political educational practice of involving other people in thinking through and challenging us about what the therapy is about. Sorry. About no, no, I'm sorry. Uh, it's really important that because it's how one can regulate the other. You know, because to be nice is too easy. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm so nice. I I can hear you, and you don't need to pay me because I will sleep well. It's almost like this. <laughs> And the, you pay me because I'm going to sleep well and it, it's okay. This is the easier thing to do, but it's not about this. We really have to think about money. Since yesterday, I'm thinking about this because we were talking about this. And uh, from your, the discussion of your book, and we really have to understand what money could be in this thing. And uh, it's it's not just to take the money out uh, and be nice. So, what the money regulate when it is there? So, people that pay for sex, what they want to, what they, what money does there? Yeah. So, it it's at least says I will decide about your uses. I to did. clarify the Monique's book that we were launching yesterday yes. is precisely about this, you know, Sorry, thank you. Matt. It's, a, it's about people who pay for sex, but now we're talking about people who pay to be listened to. Yes, yes. And this is, is something that we don't have to do charity, because charity is a actual charity. Charity, sorry. charity is an a exercise of power. I do as long as I want to do as much as I want to do, yeah, and don't. and I if I don't want to do, I will sleep well and you still be in your home. Yeah. So uh, when you don't have something that regulate, that make you understand it's a. I don't want to say a job, but you were working there. Uh, the 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 analyst network. Can really help to regulate the, the practice. I think mm -hmm. this is a something for me. It works like this. Uh, why we are always talking? Why I'm there? Why I'm connected to to this cause? Why I want to be in Amazonia and I'm not being in Peru? Mm -hmm. Listen to these people because Peru is a nearby town in, in São Paulo. Way. When, where they deposit the corpses of um, state uh, violence. These are things that we have to work. Uh, we have to understand. We have to, uh, to, to how can we say, uh, modalizar, uh, not mod mod modalize. modalize, moderate, mod moderate, maybe no, our no. own juices on this, you know, is contained or channeled in some way. Maybe I have seven uh, moments in, in the Proust, or Brazilian process. Mm -hmm. Maybe this could be helpful for that clinic to uh, synchronize with other cultures, other, other projects. First, we have in Brazil a kind of a critic of the power in the psychoanalytic associations. We are very uncomfortable because uh, a psychoanalytic associations looks like a uh, extension of Paris or extension of London, uh, not Manchester, but and <laughs> other, other places in the world. Second, we have this um, uh, question around power in the clinical situation. In the concepts in, uh, inspired, for example, for by, by, by the text of like a direction of a crew and the principle of it powers. Well, how function power in the clinical situation? And then uh, we go to a Brazilian situation where psychoanalysis get into institutions, schools, juridic 
forensic uh, hospitals and so on. And uh, psychoanalysts uh, have to come from states. How can we deal with state? How can we position ourselves in, in relation to state, the violent state? There's so many questions around this. Then we go to um, the idea that psychoanalysis is a practice, a clinical practice, but it is also a kind of a social movement, um, a school a style of life, a discourse, new social bond, uh, something else, not negating institutions uh, or, or uh, presiding them, but uh, um, the, the conscious, the psychoanalysis is much more than what happens then between uh, the consulting room and, and so on. Then we go to the uh, moment of the nets. The, the nets uh, was very important in Brazil. Net, network, I mean. Net, network, network. Uh, they they are uh, connected with a very important uh, health project in Brazil to offer pro, uh, health for everybody, public uh, uh, with no no cost, and uh, it, it comes with the constitution of 1988. That's, that established three main principles. Uh, first, health uh, must be happen in the territory. With the territory uh, content uh, and resources in the territory, don't move patients from here to there. In, what, what do you mean by territory, sorry? Do you mean in the, the local? The local. The local, local community. The local community, the local, the local place. Avoid to transport patients to hospital. Do right. not hospitalize uh, everything in health. Health is, is a right for everybody, and everybody has to be engaged in health. Uh -huh. Second is uh, do health with nets, networks, with community, with the uh, resources, and so on. And the third principle is uh, make health with the uh, care. When we uh, choose, pick up the, the signifying care, taking care, uh, and its connection with this uh, public uh, politics for, for, for offering health and uh, we're translating it uh, into uh, psychoanalytic or psychotherapeutic principle. Wow. And so we can go to, uh, we, 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 we uh, um, see, uh, next step that is uh, going to public uh, spaces, going to square, uh, having a chair, a beach chair, put it on a, a market and say, I'm listening to you and people can come and go and so on. That's, that's the point we are now. And the next question is, how can we deal with the training of those people? Because we have well established, well trained uh, psychoanalysts doing that, but we have young people at uh, the periphery of uh, uh, the huge uh, cities in Brazil. And how can we provide or how can we think with them uh, proper training? Otherwise, we are going back to coaching or we are going back to centralization and uh, colonization. Is, is a, Another chapter of self Brazilian colonization. Alex, did you want to ask a question? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, it's the, the somewhat very inspiring stuff um, that you're, you've spoken about. Um, I, I'm, I've been interested in uh, Ken Doka's work on unacknowledged grief. Um, and I wonder whether by going to the displaced community and listening, you're acknowledging their grief. Mm -hmm. It's a measurable physiological uh, impact, but also from a political dimension. Are you uh, enabling, um, by, by, by psychotherapy, uh, listening and acknowledgement, are you enabling people to see a different social arrangement? Uh, one, one uh, as an exemplar, uh, as a recipient. I've been 
interested in the Scottish statute that was passed, which was enabled the, the government to say sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, the, the, the question about what good is it if it, you know, it, it doesn't attribute to liability. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people feel, you know, get ill with the fact that they've been ignored. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know, know the, the, you picked up on the fact that uh, the, the state provided no support for the changes that it could be. Yeah. It's, it's really, really interesting. Very interesting. Um, I mean, it's, it, it's more the state didn't provide support, but in the way the state actively did not mm -hmm. provide support. Negating mm -hmm. mm -hmm. assumption mm -hmm. negating this. Mm -hmm. As soon as COVID started, the we had a very special conversation to remember our own views. And we talked to each other. Clinical care had trained us for this, for this trip. Mm -hmm. And this is really, really a special thing. I, I thank you very much for your, your question because it's something that reconnect me with the, the, the changes that this experience made on my training as an analyst. Because to be there in then make we, we in the morning, you know, <laughs> we were there they are in, in this great process and we were there to make it possible because it wouldn't be possible idealizing the past. The past must be the past, but it doesn't mean we should substitute to put the one thing in the place of that thing. Mm -hmm. We have to have the place for the things that we lost. And this is a, a fragile thing, I think. Uh, I learned this from Freud. And uh, make space for this. This is a, a, a very, very clinical and political thing in the same act, I think. Because when the state doesn't say, I'm sorry, it means you're suffering. I don't recognize mm -hmm. So you are not suffering. You have a headache, you have a heart attack. You have surgery, so it's your it, your own problem, your own responsibility. I'm not a, I'm not committed to that. So when we make this space of for our loss, loss, losses, loss, losses, yes, we are doing clinical and a political thing because we are connecting, because grief is something we do with the others. It's a very singular thing, but we do with the others. I, I, don't, I don't know how to tell it in other words, I'm sorry. I'm very touched by your question to the finish the book. So your question, seven years, writing this, crossing my grief uh, in relation to my own mother, the grief of uh, COVID, the grief of, uh, of the experience of uh, uh, Bella Monti. And uh, when we've been there, uh, we learned the, the radicality of uh, naming uh, discomfort and the, the, the malaise uh, uh, because uh, we found lots of people uh, with uh, suffering from losses but uh, uh, it was simple to say you were depressed but uh, uh, we learned 
that if, uh, if we uh, help people to nominate, oh, this is, this is a brief. It's a brief. I, I, I miss my island, miss my house, I miss my neighbors, and so on. And it's a brief. Changes completely the, the engagement of, of the person in the, uh, in the process. And that's, uh, that leads us, or that leads me, to a very uh, hidden question about the uh, psychoanalytical theory of grief. Because uh, for I say, the grief uh, takes the time, it's, it's a kind of uh, internal work, and suddenly it's over. And we can question this idea, because they're kind of uh, griefs. That sound infinite. For example, when the state didn't recognize uh, we uh, killed this uh, fellow, we uh, hired, uh, hide uh, the corpse, uh, we don't really recognize the violence. This is open the experience for a kind of an infinite mourning. And so we are not in, in a political and a clinical situation bring it together. And um, this uh, Altamira and Belmonte learned to me that we have to consider uh, grief as uh, um, the, the question remain in, in Freud in the text: uh, where uh, stopped uh, when 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 finish a uh, uh, grief, uh, grief? And uh, the answer is when you connect it to another grief, another grief. In your own history, life, or losses, and another grief from the others. When my loss is connected to your loss, uh, your loss, and uh, there's a kind of uh, closing mornings that depends on this work. It's uh, discursive and uh, subjective uh, and um, um, psychological and political uh, work. Briefest political event. We have public. We have to make public space yeah. for this. I think mm -hmm. it's a, a, a very important thing about grief. We in this time of our world, we need. We have to understand grief as a public health thing. Mm -hmm. I think. And it's the opposite of the capitalist uh, way of dealing with uh, with the finitude. Uh, leave it alone, leave it the individual, take pills, it's your problem. Only you have the experiences and memories of that person. So so stay more and more and more inside yourself. It's crazy. It's the way of producing uh, melancholic uh, political agents. I see that we're coming up to time. Um, if anyone else would like to ask questions, they can burn in questions. I have a question okay. about philosophy. I'm obviously incredibly interested in hearing you talk about all of this and talk to people see so many similarities, both in your kind of in your in the moment examples and obviously in sort of broader things too. But I'm interested in this idea of connecting the, the people to their grief and, and then connecting people sort of collectively to that. Um, and you touched on it a bit when you were saying, okay, so they've lost, you know, they've lost their home now, but actually there's a much longer story here where they've lost this before this, and they've lost that before that. Um, and in your sort of 20 days when you were doing this intensive work, was there space to connect people to to, to all of their losses and all of their grief? And, and did you do that? And, and what and what was that, what is the effect of that? Because I'm thinking, of course, in South Africa, you know, the part that people were displaced, they lost more things, you know, and and, and even amongst my own friends and um, sort of my supervisor, I've seen her. Um, she's coloured, and, and her family were displaced. And when I first started working with her twelve years ago, she would talk about being displaced or about her family being displaced. But now she's talking about slavery, and and she, it's taken her, and I've known her twelve years to connect her grief. Um, and a, and a very slow and long process, and I think in, in South Africa, you know, now we're talking about coloniality, but we weren't because we were talking about apartheid before, because we needed to deal with that. But now, 
it's opened up. So I'm interested in this kind of crash course and quick, <laughs> quick uh, uh, grief connection. That was one really good question when we were there. That was, it was your first thought list. Mm -hmm. So what happened when you were here in Eastern Sun? What's the history of your family? So when we reacted it for them, they started time when we this the rubber soldiers mm -hmm. arrived we were there and we are uh, we moved to another place and there we lost something something what did you do what did you do in that time mm -hmm. it's, it is this resource available for you now so we were just there making making things mm -hmm. and this is uh, was something that just happened. we didn't know before you know yeah it wasn't something that we ah we are going to go there and we are going to listen about grief and so we are going to connect because we mm -hmm. know that trauma is something that yeah. Blah, blah, blah. yeah we didn't know before but we were there there was some days that we we got into 18 supervised receptors like it was like they said they came they came <laughs> wow. It was like this because it was very, very, very intense. But we, this intensity, organized some fast knowledge about the situation. So from one day to the other, we learned so many things we didn't know before. But we started to know how to do as a work in progress. It seems like. A very romantic thing, but it was not. It was work. <laughs> well, that was terrific. Uh, thank you so much for talking about this. We're going to be thinking about this. We have to thank for the Red Clinic to open the space for us, share this experience among ladies. Here in America, but the wall. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Here we are.